Good morning, Bucknutters. Welcome to the Bucknuts Morning Five here on Monday, February 18th, 2019. Happy President's Day to everybody. I am Dave Biddle. Very happy to be joined by Bill Bank Green. Bank, let's start off with the grad transfer offensive lineman situation. Ohio State's in on a few of them. Jonah Jackson, of course, took his official visit to Oklahoma. You did a story for the site about this. Um, it doesn't sound great for Ohio State. I'll, I'll let you tell the listeners the specifics about Jonah Jackson. Where do things stand right now with Jonah Jackson and Ohio State? Yeah, I wouldn't say it's it's terrible, um, but, you know, what you'd like to see is him coming out of that Oklahoma visit saying there's no comparison and Ohio State's my place. I have a pretty good source on Jonah here. And, um, you know, I had the story on the Ohio State visit two weeks ago, and that went really well. I mean, it went really well. But yesterday, you know, uh, the report on the Oklahoma visit is that it went really well, like maybe a little better. Might have been a little better fit there for Jonah. Um, might be uh, more of an opportunity on that O line. They've got, you know, they lost about everybody. Might have been a little better fit with the players, the coaches. Um, but the distance is definitely something that's going to be discussed between Jonah and his parents. And, and, you know, it's not like Ohio State is, is a, you know, a short hitchhike away from their house. But, you know, their drive to Ohio State is seven hours. So that's not close. But, man, the drive to Oklahoma from their house is, you know, it, it's forever. So that is probably the thing Ohio State has in their favor. And is it going to be a big deal? I don't know. I wasn't told that. Um, and the fact that, you know, Oklahoma kind of got a little bit better marks than Ohio State wasn't by miles it was by inches so if we're very close and it makes it easier distance wise for mom and dad to see jonah play his final year of college and and win some games you know maybe a state is the choice here you know because everything was close you know no one blew anyone away in terms of you know coaching and everything and facilities and opportunity to win and chances to play in the playoffs those were all you know, Oklahoma might have inched ahead in a few things by, by inches. But that distance can be a huge factor, especially with a kid facing his final year. So we got to see. I think a decision is going to come really soon, like maybe later today or tomorrow, um, and, and go from there. But I think Ohio State is, is definitely in this and has a, has a really good shot at landing the kid. You know, obviously, you would have liked to heard that Oklahoma was terrible, the coaches were horrible, the players were awful, the food was bad. And, you know, that wasn't the case. So this is going to be a tough decision for him, and we'll see if distance is the final stumbling block there that, that gives Ohio State the edge. Let's hope so. Um, if they miss out on Jonah Jackson, I know they're in on a couple other grad transfer offensive linemen, uh, R.J. Proctor. Parker Braun. What are you hearing about R.J. Proctor and Parker Braun? Could you confident one of those guys could be a Buckeye if uh, Jonah Jackson goes to Oklahoma? Well, I think they can get one of them. Um, I'm not sure that they would have the impact that Jonah Jackson would have. Jonah Jackson's their number one guy. I mean, that's the guy they want. He's he's a, he's a definite starter. That's an NFL guy, and you know Oklahoma wants him badly for a reason. You know, the other two, they could be, you know, they may be possible starters, but they might be depth guys too. So we'll see. I mean, they want Jonah Jackson. The, the interesting thing will be, Dave, if, say, Jonah Jackson commits to Ohio State today, then what does Ohio State do with those other two? Do they still pursue them or do they drop it at that point and move on? That'll be what's really interesting. But uh, Jonah Jackson is the guy they want the most. Let's look at this uh, 2019 offensive line. Um, you know, we don't know which grad transfer they're going to get if they get a grad transfer, but just the guys coming back, like Thayer Mumford and uh, Wyatt Davis and, you know, Josh Myers presumptively taking over at center, uh, NPF hopefully coming on as a sophomore. Um, just, what do you make of this offensive line? Um, again, we don't know exactly what it's going to look like, but uh, I know a lot of people are concerned about the offensive line. How, where, where's your level of concern, Bank? Well, Dave, you've known me. Um, probably since o two o three o four I'm guessing. Have you yeah. ever heard me in all the years you've seen things I've written, whether with you or on a competing site? Have you ever seen me not show concern on the o line ever? I mean, I always <laughs> am concerned about the i mean 
it's just it's just that important. You know what I mean? It's not to be, you know, a jerk or Mr. Negative. All no, I mean it's that important. Like I've never seen a great team, and that's what I think Ohio State fans are looking for. I don't think they're looking for a team that competes in the Big Ten East. I think they're looking for a great team that wins a national title. And everything I write is always based on that premise. Okay, so it's always at the highest standards. It's hard to win it all. So, again, it's not being negative. It's just I know what it takes to win a national title, and I've never seen a great team with an average or a poor O-line. And you can ask Dwayne Long on this. We've had millions of conversations on this. So, like I say, I, I think there are a lot of questions. You know, I, I, I like Wyatt Davis. You know, I liked what he saw last year. It's kind of hard to believe he didn't start all last year, but, you know, that's probably a – another topic for another day. Fair Mumford, I thought, was, was decent last year. I didn't think he was as amazing as maybe a lot of people thought he was. I, I thought he played like he should play at the level of experience that he has and, you know, how his high school career progressed. Now, I'm expecting him to take a huge leap this year. Those two, you know, are, are need to be cornerstones. And then after that, man, it's there's a lot up in the air. And People, you know, can obviously say, well, I know this guy's going to be great. Well, I don't know how you know that because we ain't seen anybody else block anybody. So those two, like I said, I feel I feel good about them. Now, do I feel good about those two lining up and knocking Clemson and Alabama all over the field? You know, I don't know. I don't know if I feel that good. But then after that, a lot of question marks after that. And that's why I think they need Jonah Jackson really bad. He – he would really be a big deal as a guaranteed starter, probably a better player than Wyatt Davis at this point. So that's why, I mean, I, I think this conversation would be better served after the Jonah Jackson decision, but, you know, I don't think Jonah's going to let us, going to let us know this morning. So we'll, we'll continue on here. Hopefully he, he picks the Buckeyes. We can just have a whole separate show about uh, talking about the offensive line and Jonah Jackson being a part of it. Come on, Jonah. Um, it means that much. I mean, it would mean that much. He would deserve his own show. I mean, he would really help solidify a group with a lot of question marks. I mean, that would almost deserve their own show. That's how much I think he can be the difference between, you know, a decent line and a championship-type line. They needed you to help uh, recruit him, I think. That's the that's the exact sales pitch they should have used right there. I'm sure they did. I'm sure they did. I'm just, yeah, my, I'm just like you, man. I'm, I'm I'm a little down on stud as a recruiter, so I'm, I know you are as well. So. Yeah, they don't need me helping recruit. I, I had two children that went to college, and neither of my kids went to the school I thought they should have went to, so I don't think they need me <laughs> recruiting. It's good to my family. It sounds easy from where we're sitting to recruit. Well, I don't know. It doesn't really seem easy, but you know what I mean, though. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens, but, you know, thank you, Jonah Jackson. That'd be huge. Um, I do want to oh, switch gears and before we let you go and uh, talk some defense. Um, as you look at this defense with new defensive coordinators taking over, I could not be more impressed with Jeff Hasley, by the way. Um, and I know he's co-defensive coordinator with Greg Madison. I like that that mix. Um, nine returning starters. Um, do you think this defense could be a strength? Just what stands out about this defense when you think about it? I think this defense is going to be really good. And the reports I'm getting from the coaches, and they're all new. You know, everybody happily knew nothing about Ohio State. Madison and Washington knew Ohio State when they watched their limited offense throw 39 up on them. You know, and and I don't know about Barnes, but Barnes watched his Maryland team score track meet style on Ohio State. But I think once these guys got here, broke down the film, talked to the guys, I think there's a lot of optimism in that in that defensive meeting room. And I think they're very optimistic about what they have. Um, you know, there's always a thing in sports where, you know, you always blame everything on the dead guy. The guy's not here anymore. You blame everything on him because he can't answer for himself. But I think their optimism is fueling my optimism that this can be a championship level defense with just a few tweaks in personnel you know, where they had kind of had the wrong guys in the field sometimes last year. It's all going to start up front. The D tackles are amazing. And another year on Vincent and Togiai is really going to be something to see when you combine them with the guys coming back. They lose Draymond Jones, huge loss. But they got a ton of guys there that can play. The depth is good. The talent's good. The key on that D line 
and I think they feel this way, is Tyreek Smith. They like Jonathan Cooper. Jonathan Cooper is an undersized D lineman that battles his tail off. Jonathan really came on at the end of the year last year. But when you look at Tyreek with that six foot five, two hundred and eighty five pound speed power combo, he's the guy. He's the guy up front. You get him on the other side of Chase Young and those super D tackles. And that's where you start. That's your building block right there. And they don't think those linebackers are all that bad from watching film. There were some uh, issues lining up. There were some issues with youth and inexperience. There were some issues with guys maybe being asked to run too complicated of a scheme for people that hadn't really played much. So they're often, the linebackers, if, if they're just like a little bit better than being awful like they were last year, that makes this defense better. And I guess the thing that impresses me the most is they're really high on those DBs. And, you know, I'm not a big Damon Arnett fan, but they were thrilled to have him back. And Okuda, to me, is going to be a guy next year we're talking about where he's drafted. And I think he's going to leave after this year, and I think he's going to have a great year. Sean Wade, I don't think, was as good last year as we all expected, but he's got so much talent, and maybe Halfley is the guy to bring it out of him. Again, you don't want to you don't want to crap on the dead guys because they're not here anymore. But yet, there was a problem in that DB room, okay? And I think that problem is solved with Halfley. And then you go back at the safeties. Brendan, Brendan White was just scratching the surface last year of who he can be, and I think everybody would agree he's a pretty impressive player there. Um, and then Jordan Fuller was not as good last year as what we expected. You know, Jordan Fuller expected to have a big year last year and bolt for the NFL. That did not happen. So he wasn't healthy to start the year. And when you add everything in, I think, like I say, I'm always going to be a guy that's questioning the O-line, just who I am. And I think there's reason to this year. But that defense, I think the defense is going to be championship quality. I really do. I love it. I love it. Great stuff as always from Bill Bank Green. Really appreciate it, Bank. And thanks to all the listeners out there for tuning into the show. I hope you have a great day. Let's hear that Buckeye swag. Best abandoned land. Bye.